Are you facing a misrepresentation error in your Google Merchant Center and you're finally looking for a solution? Then I got you covered in this video with seven of my own implementations that I use for my own website and websites for partners that solves the misrepresentation error that looks like this. Make sure you watch until the end to solve your suspension as fast as possible. I will tell you exactly what things to fix on your website and how to submit a review to Google the right way. My name is Robin, I currently have 5 years of e-commerce experience and I'm here to help you solve the Merchant Center suspension. The good thing about the solutions that I'm going to present in this video is that once you apply them correctly using the templates in this video, they almost never come back because you simply implemented the missing information on your website. So let's get started. Here are my seven solutions to fix the misrepresentation error in your Google Merchant Center. All the templates that I show you in this video that I personally use and I use for my clients, you can download for free in my e-commerce knowledge center. I will show you where to get it. All right, so there we are. When you click on the link on the description for my free e-commerce knowledge center, you end up on the page like this. Uh, you first fill in your first name and your email address. Uh, then you go to the page here, to the library. Then you click on this video, seven solutions mi misrepresentation for Google Merchant Center. Once you click there, you can see the drop down menu right here with the document. When you click here, you see all the templates that I will use in this video. Uh, you can easily click here by file and make a copy right here. So you copy and paste it in your own Google Drive and you uh, copy uh, all the information and you can implement it directly on your website. Solution number one, the contact information. So for the first fix, it's really, really important to understand that Google only wants the best experience for the traffic or the visitors that they send to your website. Therefore, you need to be reachable for them with multiple contact options. It's required to have your full company details, email address and optional phone number in your footer and in your legal pages as shown in the document right here. So this is the way the algorithm can understand exactly what information you provide to it. So we always uh, make sure we do the street name plus the number of the street, uh, the city that you're living in or your business is registered, uh, the province your business registered, the zip code and the country. Therefore, we apply the email address also like this, info at or whatever your business email is. Uh, the contact form, so you make sure that you uh, hyperlink to the contact page right here. So you have another contact option that builds extra trust. Uh, it's optionally to have your phone number from the customer service right here. Uh, you implement the company name uh, right here, the registration number and the openings time from the customer servers. So as mentioned here, this information you can copy and paste and implement in the website footer and on all uh, legal pages on your website as well as on the contact page. So the more options uh, you have for visitors to contact you, the more trust you have in the eyes of Google. All right, and that brings us to solution number two, the shipping information. So for solution number two, it's really important to also copy and paste this template and to have on your shipping policy on your website. As explained here, I show uh, to the Google Merchant Center the cut of time from our fulfillment center. Uh, I show what kind of time zone it is in Amsterdam, uh, how long the processing time is to pack the orders from the fulfillment center and how long the delivery time will be. So it's very important to have a clear policy about the shopping what visitors on your website can expect from you. Uh, therefore, it's also a bonus here to uh, include the shipping parties that you are shipping with to make sure that people understand what carrier their package is going to bring to their house. And all the information you see in this template is also asked by Google Merchant Center as soon as you create the shipping policy in the Merchant Center itself. So you're actually communicating one on one with the algorithm that scans your website every day to search for this kind of information. And this brings us to solution number three, the return information. So for the return information page, it's super important to have the right information as well as for Google, as well as for the right buyers from your website. So don't leave any important things behind here and just simply copy paste my template and adjust everything what I explain right here. To keep things as clear as possible for the potential buyers, it's highly suggested to have the return and the refund policies on a separate page. Also make sure you mention the return days 
from the moment that people receive the package at their door. So not as soon as the fulfillment center ship the package. This is a really important detail. So before I show you the template that you literally can copy and paste, I would highly appreciate that if you put the thumbs up and subscribe on my channel if this video was valuable for you. I give tips and tricks here that no one else is talking about when it comes to lifting the merchant center suspension. All right, let's continue. So when it comes to the return information, it's as easy as just copy and paste the text from this document and adjust everything what is mentioned in brackets for your situation. So for example, this return policy is valid for the countries, then you fill in in what countries you are selling, right? Uh, here you need to fill in the amount of days that people have to return uh, their order as soon as it arrived at the door. Uh, then you explain a little bit how people can contact you and how they get the return label right here. Uh, here you explain uh, what the actual costs are for the returns. So on our own website and the ones for our clients, we always implement that the um, people that order from your website are also responsible for the cost of sending the package a return if they don't like it. Um, here you mentioned that the products need to be new uh, as soon as they return the order. Uh, as soon as they use the product, it's not eligible to uh, return the products anymore. Uh, here you explain how long it takes uh, for your business to uh, return them back the money as soon as you have the return package in your office back again. So we always suggest to keep it as short as possible, approximately 10 days right here. Uh, and here you just uh, say that you comply with all laws and regulations from the country. So as easy as, as this, you just copy and paste this from the document, adjust everything according to your needs and just make it work like that. And this brings us to solution number four, the payment information. So when it comes down to the payment information, the template is pretty straightforward. You just mention all the payment options you have in the checkout. It needs to be one-on-one -on -one similar. Uh, as you offer in the checkout and you need to have a separate page for it. Also make sure you, you mention your email address there in case people have any questions about fees or any other related things to payment method or if something's not working for example. And if you charge a certain fee for certain credit cards you also need to mention it right here. So all the information on the payment information page is one on one the exact same situation in your checkout. So. The visitors on your website don't have any surprises during the checkout. And that relates back to the important thing what Google also wants, no surprises during the checkout. And that brings us to solution number five, remove and reduce any claims on your website. So always try to minimize the claims you're making on your website to avoid misrepresentation errors, especially if you are active in the sport niche or in the supplements or any medicinal niche. But also when you have uh, things on your website like this, 100% satisfaction guarantee, life change in comfort, over 1000 satisfied customers. I understand that all things like this boost conversion, but actually you're relying here and you're misrepresenting the truth in the eyes of Google. So pro tip, make sure you reduce all claims on your website to avoid any error down the line. Nothing hurts the business more than a restricted merchant center from advertising. And that brings us to solution number six, the image file name. So when it comes down to the image file names, it's really important to understand how the Merchant Center algorithm works. First of all, it's a robot that scans your website and scans also the names of your file names like this. So if you copy and paste content from other people and have the same file name, you will get 100% a misrepresentation. Google prefers website with unique content and therefore it's highly suggested to give the file name what is actually visible on the product itself. So for example, this is a gray hoodie or a gray sweater. So a file name that would be suitable for the algorithm to understand is first of all your store name, the product name, the product variant and maybe the SKU to keep things as easy as possible for yourself and for the algorithm to uh, understand on your website. Uh, there are several copy apps um, that you can copy and paste product from other people. Uh, I don't really suggest that because then you will uh, be stuck with a general file name like this and therefore you don't understand it and the algorithm doesn't understand it as all. And if, if Google detects uh, the same images on your website as from somewhere else, you get the misrepresentation issue quite easily. Also make sure that if you use stock images, uh, change the file name so Google doesn't see that it's from online stock libraries. 
So if you want to go the extra mile, you can implement the alt text uh, as written right here. And that's basically a description about the image for the algorithm. So you tell them, listen, this is a gray winter hoodie with a zip on a model, this image. So you make it as easy for the algorithm as possible to understand exactly what you're displaying on your website. And that brings us to solution number seven. Last but not least, the track your order page. So as a general rule for the Google Merchant Center is trust the number one variant to see if you're misrepresenting something that you don't are or you have a unique website and you get approved and you can scale unlimited amount of budget in Google Ads. Therefore, we highly recommend solution number seven, attract your order page because it's basically showing the Merchant Center that look, all the people that bought from us in the past are able to track their order and see exactly where their package is. So you just basically add an extra trust element to your website that not all websites have. So that's always a bonus point as number seven right here. So most of my Google Ads clients use track one, two, three from the Shopify app store. It's a super minimalistic design, does exactly what it needs to do. And it's super easy to configure on your Shopify website. So only if you implemented all the things that I suggested in this video, you should be able to submit a review to the Google Merchant Center team. There are two options available. One option is on your Google Merchant Center account and the other one is with the link I implemented in the description. I highly recommend that you use option number two to click on the link in the description of the document because there you can implement several images and also an explanation of all the things you improved on your website and either in option number one where is the uh, submit button in your account you cannot guide google with any uh, things about the things you change on your website so they basically have no new information of what you change therefore i would highly suggest to go for option number two and explain as much as possible of the things you improved on your website with the before version and the after uh, version of the things I uh, explained to you in this video. So this is the link what I was just referring to in explanation. Uh, as soon as you click on here, you go to the support.google.com environment for merchants. Um, and then you go to this page. You can fill in everything about the uh, disapproval, why you think it's the case. Uh, they will ask you what the problem is. So for most of you, this will be misrepresentation. You select all uh, the, uh, things that are relevant for your account and you fill everything like truthfully in right here. And then you can uh, have a summary of the problem right here. So you explain them uh, actually uh, what kind of things you improved on your website and what was missing before. You're able to submit any attachment right here. Uh, so maybe you can use any screenshots of the things you implemented in your website or fixed. So you build extra trust here with the support team. And later on, if they see that uh, the issue is fixed, like for example, one of the seven solutions I presented here, you can explain right here. Then they will lift the suspension of your account and you're able to start running Google Ads again. So this is the best way to uh, submit any review to the Google Merchant Center because basically in your account, you are not able to submit any extra information. You just click the button there and it's done. So you cannot explain the improvements you made. So therefore, this is a much, much better solution. All right, and that wraps up the video with the seven solutions you can implement to solve the misrepresentation error in your Google Merchant Center. My name is Robin. I personally use these seven implementations to solve Merchant Centers for our clients. And I also provide a service of running your Google Ads profitably. So in case you have any questions about Merchant Center or about Google Ads, just click on the links down below and I will guide you personally there. And if you have any other questions, just leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer them all personally. If you have any more questions, just check the recommendations here for more Merchant Center videos that I made previously. I see you on the winning side.